We're putting another set of plugs in there. We're gonna open up the gap a little bit. We're also going to rejet the carbs. So right now we're gonna get that stuff swapped out and hope for the best. And Thanks for kicking it with us here on Finnegan's Garage. Appreciate you coming back as always. Couple of updates for you. Uh, broken leg. We are six weeks into this deal. I am off crutches officially. Like I'm not using them at all anymore. Uh, I got another surgeon's appointment here pretty soon where hopefully they keep telling me the same thing. No surgery. And with any luck, a couple weeks from now when I go to that appointment, hopefully the boot comes off. That would be great. Uh, cause the boot is weird. It's, it's like two inches taller than my shoe. And so once I was off the crutches, I realized I couldn't walk in my normal shoes, my vans, cause I was like this. So I had to go buy shoes, well, a pair, but I can only wear one. I had to go buy running shoes that were taller to even me out, which is weird. But, uh, anyway, for those of you that actually care about the broken leg, that's what's going on with it. Uh, this video is going to be fun. Um, it's an update for you guys on the rubber duck. The last time you saw it, we were at uh, Steel Alabama track testing it, and it went pretty good in that we got the car to leave the starting line, which was nice. We were having problems in the beginning with it hooking. It just didn't want to. So we got that ironed out with some tips from my friend Ryan Rakestraw, made a bunch of suspension and tire pressure changes, um, adjusted the QA1 Mod Series shocks in the back, Got it to leave, but then at the top of every gear, right around 6,000 RPM, it was misfiring. And we tried giving it more fuel, taking fuel away, nothing was happening there. So we decided to chassis down to the thing. If you're just joining us or are new to the channel, let me tell you all about this car. This is a 1967 Pontiac Firebird that is a legit barn find. I know it doesn't look like it now, but this car sat in a barn for 16 years before my friends and I drug it out. And I am very attached to this car, mostly because of the story about it. Um, a guy named Otto owned it. He owned Paradise Dragway in Calhoun, Georgia. This car sat in his barn for 16 years before I grabbed it. We put a lot of work into it. It had a big block Chevy with one Dominator that ate a cam lobe eight miles after I bought the car. Uh, we then threw this mystery motor in here that belonged to Newburn. And we call it the mystery motor because we had it rebuilt because it too had eaten a camshaft. However, the engine builder disappeared. I got no paperwork with it. I told him we're putting a blower on it. However, I don't know what the ring gaps are. I don't know what the compression ratio is. I have no idea what cam and valve springs are in this motor. I just know that the guy didn't believe in silicone and it leaked from every gasket. And uh, even though we put a blower on it, it seems fairly happy. So happy, in fact, that at two different tracks on two different days, this thing ran 904 at like 148 miles an hour, blowing my mind and pretty much everyone around me because it's not a light car. The motor has pretty good parts in it, I think. You know, the external stuff you can see, it has Dart Pro 1 heads, it has a Dart Big M iron block. That's a Blower Shop 871 supercharger, quick fuel carbs, the exterior looks great. What's inside of it? No clue at all. So I don't even know if we're gonna break this thing by whooping on it like we've been doing. Uh, behind it, it has a really nice Turbo 400 built by Gearstar. It's got a reed case. It's got a trans brake, uh, quick performance built a nine inch out the back that's fabricated, gusseted. It's got QA1 mod series coilovers on it. There are great parts surrounding this thing. I'm gonna ignore my cell phone because I'm trying to nail this in one take and uh, we're on the same wavelength, right? You don't, want to, you don't want me to chop all this up. Anyway, the last time we went to the drag strip, the car wouldn't hook. We got that straightened out. We were running out of time. By the end of the day, this thing would only go 945 at like 145 because it kept misfiring at 6,000 RPM. And we did not have time to cure that. I'm about to leave town to go film Roadkill and visit another engine shop. So Joe is going to put a new coil in this thing in case that was the problem. Then he's going to drag it back to Alabama to go chassis dyno it. And with any luck, those guys will straighten out what's going on with this car so that when I get back, we can go to the, we can go to the drag strip again and see, can we finally get that magical eight second pass? I don't know, but we're going to try.
We are here at Avid Speed, just outside Birmingham, Alabama, with Blake, the owner of Avid Speed. Um, we met Blake at uh, Alabama International Wasteway the last time we were out there with Rubber Duck, and he was kind of, we forgot all of our nitrous, or all of our Holly Jets, we forgot everything. We had nothing to do any kind of carb tuning there. Um, Blake was kind enough to hand me the keys to his shop, say, nobody's there, but go get what you want. My shop is yours. I don't know you, but here's my keys. Um, and I super appreciate that. Thank you. I don't know many people that'll do that. Ah, no problem. Um, as you guys know, we were way off of running an eight second pass with Rubber Duck last time. Uh, we're hoping to hopefully next week go out and do another track test um, and maybe get to that eight second number. Hopefully. 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 <laughs> um, so today we're going to make some carburetor changes, try and see where we're at with jetting and you know, were we going the wrong way before? Were we going the right way? Where are we at with the timing? Basically, that's where we're gonna be at today. So watch and see where we end up. Um, Blake here, when we were out there, he was tuning, what, five or six different cars? Oh, quite a few of them, yeah. quite a few. But none of them had carburetors. Uh, Probably not, maybe <laughs> one or two, <laughs> but not as near as yeah. often. They don't have carburetors. And if they did, there was still something with a laptop that we could hook up to it. Right, right. <laughs> so, and all we have in this is a is a digital seven box, you know, so that's Hammers not really a whole lot of, yeah. Hammers not a whole lot of laptop tuning going on there. No, not at all. No, no, no. It's just Only the laptop will be for the dyno today. Bare bones, yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Um, so, but you can tell these people about, you know, your, a little bit of your background, where you oh, come from. Man. Uh, just where they come can find from. you. Yeah, yeah. So we're in Trustful, Alabama, just outside of Birmingham, and uh, I've been had the shop Avid Speed since 2017 is when I opened it. Um, been tuning for well before that, doing from stock daily driver trucks and stuff for buddies, and turned into race cars, and turned into big boy race cars, then turned into here we are, I guess. It but, went uh, from hobby to job. Went from hobby to little side gig to holy crap, I have no time for a full-time job to <laughs> we should probably open a shop at this point. Right. And uh, that was from the span of my late teens, early 20s to now, uh, what is that, seven years ago, something, 2017, yeah. long time ago. But nonetheless, yeah, turned into here. Yeah, I gotta tell you, if, if you guys saw in the last episode, one of the one of the first cars to go down that, that that right lane was a wagon that Blake tunes. That car left hard. It left with a huge wheel stand. <laughs> I was impressed. Oh yeah, I, I was impressed. Good day, to, good way to start the day. Oh yeah, it was. Absolutely, it was. <laughs> it really was. So, all right. Well, we're gonna get to it. Um, watch and see what we fix, break, mess up. I don't know. All the we'll above. See. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. Who knows? So we've done two kind of warm up runs on the dyno. Uh, we're having issues with the O2 sensor, trying to get it to read, it reads it idle, but once he starts rolling into the throttle, getting into it, the O2 sensor goes away. We put a new O2 sensor in it to try and see if that works. We're also going to rejet the carbs um, and we are putting another set of plugs in there. We're gonna open up the gap a little bit uh, we did go ahead and change out our coil earlier from a standard blaster to the MSD HVC coil. So right now we're gonna get that stuff swapped out and hope for the best and let's hope the O2 sensor reads. If we can't get the O2 sensor, we're kind of in a world of hurt here. So are we better now? Everything's working. Tune not much better, but the dyno's working better. Okay. Uh, wide band's still showing low tens, even with the jet change, so we're a mile off still. Okay. But nothing but that jet change was already 43 horsepower, right here at this spot right here. Yeah. And this, what, 38, 37 horsepower gain right there. Just for, just going back leaner on the jets. Okay. Right. Just in that little bit, and we're talking way down in the curve at 43, 4400. So yeah, I mean, maybe we were just going completely the wrong way when we were right. at the track that day. Yeah, I think so. Uh, yeah, cause, I mean, that's 45 foot-pounds and 36-ish foot uh, horsepower. 
just on that little bit of jet. And that's and only else. at 5,600. Yeah, yeah, and that I'm only, and where I'm catching it is only even 4,400. Okay. So, I mean, we're, it's going to be light years difference once it's all cleaned up. Okay. So, that's well, Let's uh, go four jet sizes down, okay. see where we're at. The f jets we had in here were the same ones we left Steel, Alabama with uh, the last time we were at the track. Uh, I made one change and went back to what it was set up with with C&J. Um, and now we've taken another jet sizes, six jet sizes out of what C&J sent it with. So we'll see, uh, hopefully we get closer to uh, our goal here, huh? Absolutely. Yeah. Definitely be progress. Right, let's do it. Still picking up. Uh, what? Uh, oh, there we what go. were we at there? Let's see. Let's go back and look at it. Uh, we're not far off now. We're eleven four. Eleven four. Yep. Man, I'd say probably another four jets, huh? Yeah, we're like right in the ballpark now. Eleven four, eleven five. Like that's not bad now. Eleven three. It starts petering off on the big end down to eleven zero. It starts getting fat there. When it starts, starts getting, getting fat on the top end. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, but we're definitely, definitely in a reasonable number at this point. Okay. Yeah, 11.3 right there. That's at 5,300. So we're starting to work our way in now. Okay. Sweet. All right. Much, much cleaner. One more jet change. Yeah, hopefully so. We'll see what happens. Absolutely. So since the first pull, yeah, it's gone from, uh, we laid out at 4,500, so we're not all the way up to peak RPM or anything. Right. But at that point, it's already picked up 77 horsepower and 89 foot-pounds of torque from where we started, and that's only fuel changes. We've changed nothing else as of now. I mean, the spark plug gap, but I don't think we're to that point yet. Yeah, I, I, the spark plugs aren't gonna do that, but this is our biggest deal right here. Absolutely. We're down 10 jet sizes from when we started. Holy cow. I was about to ask how far it was because yeah, I knew it was a long ways. Jet sizes since we started. And that's probably going to be the sweet spot. It's going to be right at it. Right here? It's got to be. I mean, if we were already at 11.4, 11.3 right now, and we picked up a whole point on six, so another four should put us another half a point or so away. I mean, it's got to be close. There's never really any quick jet changes. No, heck no, it's such It's much. not like hit a couple buttons on the keyboard and... Oh yeah, there's super quick jet changes. It's called Go EFI. <laughs> yeah. Hit the up arrow a couple of times, <laughs> call it good. All right, so we made our third jet change, I think it was. That was our third jet change. We were down 10 jet sizes from where we started today. Um, everything looks really good now. We're a little bit lean on the primary, I think, down low. So I'm gonna add two more jet sizes back in it right now and see if that helps it out down low. Um, if not, maybe I'll add a little bit more, you know, another jet or two on the secondary and see where we're at, but we're super close. We're almost up 100 horsepower from where we started, which is awesome. Um, and it's running really good. I don't hear it breaking up over 6,000 RPM. It sounds pretty crisp and good. We didn't, we lost just a little bit at peak, but we did have a negative. Look under it and see if the wideband's still in. Please tell me it's not, because it didn't work again. It should be in the. Uh, should be in the it collector, should be the sniffer right? In the collector. Oh no, that's on the ground. Oh well, there's your problem. Oh. But it should be good. I mean, it should be just a little bit uh, richer, and it shows just a little bit, just a tiny power loss, like right here. And as I rolled in, but it coupled back up up top, so I think we're all right right there. It's just a tiny. I mean, it was like three or four horsepower. Car's running crisp. It's not laying over. It's not cutting out above 6,000 RPM anymore like it was back at the at uh, Alabama Raceway. Um, so we're gonna pull some plugs, take a look at the plugs again, see how they look. We just just before that run, we added two new plugs on each side, um, and we'll take a look at it and see where we're at. And I'll get back to you and let you know uh, how it comes out. 
All right, I think we're on uh, number seven here, Blake. Six. Something like that, seven. We're on our number seven pull. Um, the only change we made for this one is we added about a degree, a degree and a half of timing to it. Um, so let's we'll see where we're at. We haven't made any fuel changes. Our uh, fuel on the spark plugs look really good right now. So we'll see. I'll, I'll let you know what happens on the next one. No real gain from time. No real gain? Yeah, there's some little spots here and there, but not How's enough. How's our uh, wideband look? How's the O2 uh, looking? It's all happy again. Let me drop that off of it. Yeah, everything's good. Still sitting in the low, low 12s, high 11s, right where we were wanting it to be. Okay. It's in 11.9, 11.8 right there. It gets up to like 12.1 right when you roll it. So everything's smooth there, but with the timing, it didn't really make much of a gain, so. I might want to drop it and go back the other way and make sure we're not overtimed or anything. Just to double check, but I would expect it to have picked up looking at that spark plug. But it seems to be no game. It was like only like a degree, degree and a half. Yeah. So it's not a whole lot. It wasn't a lot. We'll look at it and see if we're missing anything, but a little bit down low. Ah, maybe. I think there might be more of a gain than I see. Yeah, that's true. It's only like a degree, degree and a half. And that's still nine horsepower right there, so. That we picked up? Yeah, in spots. Like the peak only picked up just a couple, uh, I think four, but there's spots that we're seeing. I mean, right there's was, uh, there's 10 horsepower right there. Yeah, we might want to keep going. It might be more than I realize. Let's see, there's 12 right there. So I mean, don't look at just the peaks. Yeah, if you drop everything else out, you can see there's gains throughout there. There's, I mean, there's constant gain, but it just gets bigger in different spots where it's right. almost cleaner. It's not getting these little dips. It's actually staying clean throughout. You got a good one right there, then that's where I just let out, so it kind of rolled over. Okay. But we might be onto something. We'll look at that plug, see what it says. All right. So what do you think? Look at the plug? Yeah, we'll maybe look at the plug. Maybe add another degree of timing? Yeah, add okay. uh, maybe a degree of timing, see what the plug says, but based off of that, it may actually want some more. Just looking at the peaks, it didn't say so, but overall, I'd say maybe. At like 68, it did some sort of flutter, but that was after the shift light came on and everything. Yeah, it, you could hear it kind of break up just a little bit right at the top. Yeah, that was like 6,900-ish or something like that. Okay. So that, w but the shift light was already on and everything, so I don't know if that's higher than he usually, usually pulls it or what chip's in it or what. I'm not sure. But we were way up there whenever that happened. Like I was looking at the tack itself right here and it was it was right at 6,900 whenever they did that and that's when okay. I let out. But everything else was good. It made a little bit more power just from sitting we got a little bit of spike in torque where I jumped on the throttle a little harder than normal. That's the whole anomaly with torque converters and whatnot. But you can see how flat the power is all the way to 6,900. Yeah. I'm happy with everything besides the little RPM going crazy Glitch. right there. Yeah. But everything was super smooth on that one. I just had to look it over and see, but it picked up everywhere. We didn't change anything. We just ran it again. Yeah. I don't know if it was a different temperature it was at or what that it liked that so much. It seems like we've been staying about the same pool between. Did you put your foot all the way to the floor this time? Is that what you did? Yeah, I figured I'd just hold that out to the last of the day <laughs> and then finally go to the floor with it. But no, man, it was, I mean, I don't know what more we could do at that point besides just take it to the racetrack and look over plugs and stuff whenever it's getting a true track load on it and everything. And yeah. Overall, I think um, it's a lot happier now. Seems like progress. A lot happier. I'd we progress. made four, five jet changes. A bunch, a at bunch. least. Yeah, it had to be. I around think there. we went from we're down ten jet sizes total. Yep. Um, we're up a degree and a half or so on timing, and I think we wound up with what was it? Hundred extra, hundred and twenty foot pounds of torque. Yep. Ninety something horsepower. Like ninety two horsepower. All right. Pretty big gain. Yeah. Solid gain. Yeah. Mainly from I mean, fuel, amazingly. That's it. We're going to uh, 
track test it in a couple of days here and keep our fingers crossed if we can get this car in the eights. Absolutely. Right. We're definitely closer. Yep. Definitely closer. All right, we're back. Car's home from the dyno. I'm home from Roadkill. And a uh, pretty successful dyno day. It put over 600 horsepower to the tires. And that is not with the party pulley. That's with, I think, a 56 tooth upper pulley on there. Um, I don't know how much boost it was making. I forgot to ask that. And to be honest, I was getting updates while I was on the plane via text. Oh, Joe says 10 pounds of boost. So that pulley made 10 pounds of boost. The guys were texting me while I was on the plane. So I don't have the whole story just yet. But from what I understand, they took some jet out of it. They uh, reestablished the timing. I think we have 27 degrees in it. Is that the deal? I think it's a 28. We tried to go to 27, but it was just it's trying to get one degree out of it was really right. hard. So it's got 28 degrees of timing in it. Um, it's 10 jet sizes smaller than where we were, but only, I think that's four sizes smaller than the carbs arrived from C&J after they were rebuilt. At the very end of the dyno, Blake said that it broke up at about 6,800 RPM. And that could be it tickling the rev limiter, but I don't think so. So the last thing we're gonna do before we go back to the drag strip is check the valve springs. Uh, again, I don't know what they are. I don't know what the specs should be. So pretty much I'm looking for ones that aren't broken. So if they're all similar in terms of how much seat pressure they have right now, great. We'll check the valve lash. If it's similar, then great. That's what the lash is supposed to be. If any of them are out of whack, like let's just say the valve lash changed from one <laughs> cylinder to the next by 30 thousandths of an inch, then that's bad. That would tell me we're eating up a cam lobe or a roller lifter, or maybe it was just misadjusted. Um, so right now we're gonna check lash, we're gonna check spring pressure. If that all looks the same and good, then we're back to the drag strip <laughs> to see what this thing will do and what those dogs will do to the delivery guy. So to check valve lash, you need the lifter of the cylinder you're looking at to be on the base circle of the cam, because when it is, this valve should be open and there should be a gap between the tip of the valve and the roller of the rocker. And this one is not, because you can grab it and it's not loose. This one is not. This one is not. This one might be though. Yeah, okay. So that one there, it's probably on the base circle of the cam which means the valve's shut and there's a gap there. So right now you can do two things. You can slide feeler gauges in there and figure out what the lash is. You can also take this LSM on head spring checker and you can find out how much pressure it takes to just lift the valve off the seat of the cylinder head. And uh, I have no idea what these are supposed to be. And uh, truth be told, this tool was set up for shaft rockers on another motor, but I'm gonna use it today on these stud mounted rockers. Okay, so that one breaks off the seat at about 140 PSI, which is not a lot, 140 PSI of seat pressure. Um, so what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna find if there's any others loose, compare them, and if they're not, similar, then I'm going to go back and start rotating the motor and double check that everything is actually on the base or the little cam. All right, this one breaks off at about 155, so not quite 160. So that one's 160, so there's probably a 10 pound difference between these two. Same thing right at 150, 145. Okay, the rest of these are tight, we can't check them. So we need to rotate the motor to uh, get these ones, like this one here. This valve is open, we need it to shut. And once it shuts, we can check. But like I said, the real way to do this is to make sure they're on the base circle of the cam, then slide a feeler gauge in there, find out what the lash is, then check the spring pressure. So we'll do that right now. Keep going. Okay, so intake valve is open, keep going. This is a lot easier with the spark plugs out. Intake valve is closing, let's get it about halfway. All right, and now we can check lash here. All right, so number one exhaust, 24 thousandths of lash. 
Is that correct? I have no idea. We'll just have to look at the rest of them to see if they're similar. Now, if you're really good, you can find companion cylinders that mimic the movement of the one you're looking at, and you can go through this much faster. But I get distracted a lot by squirrels and people, and to be honest, my favorite way to do this is with a beer in my hand and just go this cylinder, both of them. Rotate the motor until you get to both of these checked, then go to this one, then go to that one, then go to that one. And uh, that's the only way I can do it without losing track of where I'm at. Ready for the next one? Okay, so we've done number one exhaust. Mm -hmm. which what we did was we watched the intake open all the way, then close about halfway. Then we knew this was on the base circle of the cam, which is the exhaust. You can feel it. We put several feeler gauges in there, found out that we have a 24 thousandths of an inch gap between the roller tip of the rocker and the tip of the valve. Now, we're gonna rotate the blower, which is connected to the crank by the belt, until this one just starts to open. Once the exhaust just barely starts to open, we can then check the intake. Rolling. I'm just going slow. I don't want to go past it. Oh, don't worry about it. You're good. I'll feel it. It'll tighten up when it starts to open. You're about to get your workout today, buddy. All right, there we go. That one, lash is gone, valve is opening. We can now check the intake. And the intake is a little looser. It's probably closer to 25 than 24. Let's see here. Yeah, there we go. It goes in there. So, 24,000 slash there, 25,000 so there. Let me write it down. And while we're here, I forgot to do it the first time. Let's check. Check the spring. Let's check the spring. And the way you use this tool will determine the reading you get. Where you grab the handle, how high, how low, whether you have an extension on it, where the fulcrum is, the distance from here to here, it all affects the reading. So the key is consistency. Good news. No broken springs, no excessive valve lash. We did tighten up every rocker arm, just a couple thousandths, because uh, I think it might be happier at 22 thousandths lash than it was at 25. Uh, time to go back to the track. Uh, we're gonna load it up and head out to Alabama. Will it go in eight? I don't know. Not with this pulley. I don't think it's gonna do it with this pulley. Um, unless it was running so poorly that it is way better than it was now, thanks, it got dyno tuned. Um, it's possible. I mean, at the track the last time, it didn't want to rev over 6,000. Maybe it will now. I am a little concerned that the last pull on the dyno, it broke up at 6,800. I don't know what that's all about, but it definitely didn't tag the rev limiter. I checked that because that was set at 7,500. So that wasn't the problem. Um, we didn't find anything wrong. Maybe it was a fluke. But we'll go back to the track, find that out, and you'll see that soon on Finnegan's Garage. In the meantime, thanks again for hanging out. And thanks to everybody that went to fsmgarage.com and bought the merch. I appreciate you more than you know. See ya.